Alrighty, so welcome back, guys, to another Emerald Podcast. Thanks for coming along and listening in. Absolutely, it's been a little while. Has and, been. Uh, yeah, it's good to be back. As always, guys, if you enjoy this, or even if you don't, please click the like and subscribe. It'd help us a lot. Yep. Now, um, you know, we're back on our uh, topic that we love to talk about a lot, and that's mm. inflation. Yep. Central banks and interest rates. Yeah. For good reason. Well, ab- absolutely. I mean, if, if you're trading and investing at the moment, you're being forced to speculate on interest rates and inflation. That's why market, well, that's how markets are moving at the moment. And, um, you know, uh, that's going to probably dictate the movements for a while yet. Correct, correct. So for, for a lot of this week, guys, we've seen a bit of sideways move in the markets, you know, in anticipation of the CPI reading, uh, which we had last night. And we had a very interesting move on the market overnight, didn't we? Yeah, very interesting. Um, you know, roller coaster, uh, volatile. I don't know what words you know you'd like to use, but it was a it was a bit of a funny one. Yep, so essentially, we've seen the S and P five hundred break support. Uh, did that intraday, sat down there for maybe a couple of hours, and then shot back up. I think uh, we had a turnaround of about twelve hundred points on the Dow, something like that. Yeah, yep, massive, pretty, massive. pretty big turnaround, guys. Yeah, from you know two and a half percent lower on open on the S and P to two and a half percent higher on close. So, um, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll ask big question, Sam. Is this the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, very good question. Um, and look, if if I knew the answer to that, I would not be telling everyone here. I'd be, well, at least not yet. I'd be getting my uh, trades in first and then saying, um, I don't think so necessarily. I don't think so. Uh, I think, um, you know, markets, one, can often go a lot longer and a lot more negative uh, than you think they can. And you know, when you think all hope is lost in markets, sometimes you lose that last additional bit of hope that you didn't even know you had. Um, but also the macroeconomic issues that have led to this, and not just the macroeconomic issues, the monetary issues that have led to this, haven't been resolved yet. No. Uh, and for that reason, I'm hesitant to call the bottom. I'll, I'll go a step further and sort of say not only haven't they been resolved, but there's the opportunity for them to get a lot worse than what they have been. And I, I guess that's the theme of what we're going to talk about here is what, what can we expect in the next three to six months um, and what's the worst case and maybe best case scenarios here? All right, so I'm just going to bring up some slides real quick. Um, we're going to talk through the CPI data from last night. Now, you can see here, once again, that core CPI has come in much higher than expected and quite a bit higher than the last reading. And we've been talking about this a lot in the office, actually, and we're focusing more on the core CPI at this point than the headline. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to go? I'd, yeah, I think that's uh, quite a worrying sign. This is a 40-year high for core mm-hmm. CPI. Uh, and this shows that um, the price increases are becoming entrenched. It's no longer... Uh, necessarily short-term supply shocks or things like that. Uh, it's, you know, service prices, uh, mm-hmm. things that in a non-inflationary environment you wouldn't expect to be rising, um, and they are starting to rise. And this is the complete opposite from what the Fed wanted to happen. They wanted mm-hmm. to stop these price rises becoming entrenched, and that's what this is to me. And I do um, want to express my sincere belief and i think uh you know it's it's i think this looks really bad on the fed uh Mm -hmm. and yes they probably acted a bit too late but i also think they've been too aggressive with the rate rises um in in the last few months and i think those rate rises have led to these core cpi increases um uh, you know, like a Fisher relationship where people have to up their prices as their costs increase. And the costs, in this case being the cost of money, has gone up for them. And while they can, they're lifting their prices. And it's not just the cost of money. So so this is how complex we, we're getting here, right? So you've got cost of money going up, your cost of wages going up, your cost of energy going up, your, your goods going up, everything's just going up in mm-hmm. price. So what point can they stop this? Yeah, well, you know, the, it's in many ways it's using a sledgehammer to crack a nut um, and, you know, they've basically uh, built a wily Coyote <laughs> Acme-sized sledgehammer <laughs> at this point. But the thing is, they've been making it bigger and bigger and bigger. It's still going to take a, t- a while for that sledgehammer to come down and hit the nut. Um, so by the time that it hits the nut, you know, 12 to 18 months from when they started lifting rates, 
it's going to be a massive hammer. It's mm-hmm. still going to be the same nut. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's it's they're going to lead to a, a big economic crash. Um, we'll look at the the bond chart soon. I think that's going to yeah, show that as yeah. well. Yeah, I, I think um, I think this bond chart also helps uh, show um, your analogy there of that uh, hammer getting bigger, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'll explain this chart a little bit here. So the blue line down the bottom was the bond curve uh, back in March. Okay, you can see that the shorter term yields, one to two year, were, were down near one percent. Uh, then you know we can see that there was a, a path of interest rates going up from there. Then then all of a sudden the view changed, right? And the Fed got more aggressive again. Inflation didn't come back down, so they jumped all the way up to three percent. Okay, so that was the bond market saying, hey, I think rates are going to go to 3%. Then all of a sudden we come into October now and that's jumped again to 4.5%. So, you know, you're talking about every three months or so, even maybe a couple of months, um, these expectations are still going up, Mm -hmm. okay? Um, And what we're also seeing is a heavily inverted yield curve, Mm -hmm. which is a huge indicator of a recession to come. Yep. So, you know, this is your sledgehammer, right? Uh, the, ha- the hammer started uh, down at 1%. We're now at 3%. Uh, so we went to 3%. Uh, expectations are now 4.5%. Um, and the Fed's only at 35 right now. So it means there's still plenty of room for them to, to go up to meet the market. But what happens if next month's CPI comes in high, the months after, you know, coming to December, the CPI is high, how much higher are these bond expectations going to go? Like, are we going to get to 6%? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very good question because uh, the Fed's going to keep going until they see the crash happening, and until they see the cracks appearing. And uh, with all the statements that they've come out and said so far, you know, that's basically... Uh, when they see the crash or the cracks appearing in the US economy. Mm-hmm. There are crashes happening already. There are cracks appearing yeah, oh yeah. already. And they're pretty significant. It's just that they're not in the US yet. So we've got the Fed exporting recessions at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it seems for the time being, they're happy to do just that uh, and wait for those uh, contagions to hit the US market. I do question whether, um, you know, uh, by, by that point, it will be significantly too late to uh, you know, soften the soften the the blow of the hammer. Mm. Um, I think you know if you read economic history and and go back in time and you look at the events leading into the Great Depression and stuff, you question um, uh, you know how silly could those monetary policy uh, practitioners back then have been conducting you know their interest rate rises into the into the uh, Great Depression as they did. And we're seeing the exact same thing here. Mm. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think the US Fed will have a lot to answer for once this is all over. Uh, I think we're going to have a rethink of monetary policy um, and how it's implemented. And uh, yeah, really, uh, in my mind, uh, they were a bit too late to the reaction, but now they're being extremely reactionary to short-term uh, economic data with a tool that works a very, very long time out in time. Um, and it's, I think, a recipe for disaster. But Yeah, we'll it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? So they're, they're, uh, uh, And if you look at what the UK is doing at the moment, right, um, maybe an indicator of what other central banks around the world may do uh, when things get tough is they're doing QE. Mm-hmm. And they're yep. doing QE in an environment where the Federal Reserve is trying to destroy demand and, and, and stop inflation, but you're doing like a, a, a type of stimulus um, to provide liquidity to a market that, that otherwise would crash. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're coming in and rescuing. They're, they're destroying the market, but then they're coming in and rescuing it straight away. Yep, absolutely. It's, and it's, it's interesting. Yeah, you know, great example of the cracks appearing. Um, you know, no one wanting to buy UK government, you know, uh, debt beyond a certain date and um, you know the central bank has to come in and, and do quantitative easing got to buy their, their own government's uh, government's debt um, and so yeah look uh, the, the problem is I think that's directly related to the rapid lift in US interest rates the problem is those cracks will happen all around the world before they come to the US mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know if they keep happening by the time it does come to the US, you know, I think they're going to have some problems. Um, uh, in, in another slide, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll touch that on... Um, the next one. Yeah, we'll touch on, uh, on that here. Basically, um, 
The Fed uh, reiterated the last few speeches that don't expect any um, rate cuts in 2023. And the, the market still is uh, towards the end, but, uh, you know, I don't know how they can say that um, because, uh, you know, we looked at the yield curve inversion. We're seeing the cracks appear overseas. Uh, you know, even with the supposedly hot um, economy, economic data is a bit sketchy. Jobless claims were a little higher overnight. Um, yeah, I don't know how they can say that, uh, that over the next year, there's not going to be any interest rate cuts. Obviously, they're trying to signal to the market, you know, but... Well, they're trying to keep the market on a, on a knife edge, right? Mm. So they, they can't let too much confidence creep in because then people are just going to go out and spend in, and make inflation go up. So they've got to keep everybody scared. Uh, and if, if people aren't scared yet, well, they're going to still make them scared. And, and I guess that's what I'm worried about here because, like, looking at this chart here, guys, right, um, this is the 90-day uh, bank bill futures, right? So this is the futures markets, basically, that sits, sits on your bond market. Um, now, you can see here in the short term, they're expecting rates to continue to go up and, and top out at about 4.8% in the first quarter of next year and then come off uh, down to about 3.5%. Now, what you guys need to remember is... Looking at this chart only about a month ago, maybe you know two months ago, um, well, it was topping out at 4% and coming off in December or November. Now they've kicked that out to March next year. You've got to think about this, guys. If they kick it out to June next year and up at 6%, what if they kick it out to September next year at, at, at 6%? What's the equity market's going to do, mm -hmm. right? And 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 that's going to be that's going to eventuate if inflation does not come down, mm -hmm. right? Because the Fed is on this rate hiking path. Who, who knows whether they're going to come off it? And it just sounds like they won't come off it unless CPI comes down. Mm -hmm. We're yet to see that. Yep. No, e exactly right. And um, you know, some people, oh, in, inflation's topping out. Well, we're seeing core infl core CPI still rise. You know, it's remaining sticky. It's not really coming down. It's still way up there. Oil prices are pushing back up with OPEC cutting production. Um, yeah, I'm yet to see the optimism. Uh, yeah. And, you know, even from our own perspective, we've got the RBA cash rate um, and it's well below where yeah, the market below. sees the uh, RBA cash rate in three months' time. Um, so, uh, and, you know, in, in many ways, unless something changes the RBA probably will be forced to start pushing our own rate up to three and a half, four, four and a half percent. Yep. Uh, you know, yes, the equity market loved when the RBA only did the quarter of a percent rise um, at the start of the month. But what happened then? Well, the Aussie dollar tanked. Yeah. Uh, tanked dramatically back to, you know, almost the COVID lows, not quite, but came right off to COVID levels. Uh, and what does that do for our own inflation? We're a big importer of goods and, and services to a lesser extent. And um, if our dollar is falling relative to the US, our oil prices are going up, a lot of the goods we import are going up in cost, and our imported inflation gets worse. So, uh, yeah, you know, our own RBA may be forced to, to follow this curve or, or even higher if the US curve goes higher. Yeah. Yep. So what you're hearing here, guys, really, is there's still a lot of pressure for equities. Um, Household spending is going to come under pressure, guys. I don't think the pain's really been felt yet here or in the US, right? Mm. There's big savings out there. I mean, people saved a lot of money through COVID. Um, there was a lot of stimulus through COVID. But that's going to run out, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens when it runs out? What happens when fixed rate uh, loans come to term next year and people all of a sudden have to feel the pain of this massive hike in interest rates? Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot more pain to come, guys, and we might see some short-term push-ups in the market and things like that. But for me, really, until inflation comes back down, uh, until we start seeing CPI ease off and you know the energy markets maybe ease off a little bit, um, I still think there could be plenty more downward movement in this market, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you know we're coming into US earnings season. If, it, if we get further good e earnings from the US, we'll probably see a couple of weeks where the market could move up higher. Mm -hmm. But just you've got to keep an eye on those bond yields, guys, right? Um, US 10 years is sort of my bellwether at the moment, and that's what I'm using in the short term to, as a bit of an indicator, right? So if you can take anything out of this webcast, guys, or out of this podcast today, keep an eye on the UK bonds, keep mm -hmm. an eye on the US 10-year. We've come up to 4%. 
if that goes through and keeps climbing, equities will fall. Yep. Right? I, I'm confident in saying that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and until the Fed pivots, I don't think we're going to find the bottom of this market. Um, we need to see a pivot from the Fed, which in turn you'll see bond markets come back off a bit uh, and then things will, can start correcting back to the upside again. Until then, we've just toyed with some key levels on the S&P 500. Uh, if, that, if, that, if that gets taken out in the coming month... Things could turn out to be a bit more like a JFC uh, pullback. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, you know, uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on that you mentioned with starting the earnings season, it started fairly well so far, really good yeah. results from BlackRock. Yep. Um, that p- helped the financials overnight. Taiwan Semiconductor had a, a good result. Um, Pepsi as well. Pepsi. The earnings need to be good though. Uh, yeah. The problem is that earnings forecast for the US for... Um, the first half of next year remain really, I believe, uh, too positive. Yeah. And towards the end of this year, as they always do, earnings will be revised lower. The issue is if those earnings are revised significantly lower, it gives a mathematical justification for equity markets to go significantly lower as well. Yeah. Um, and this is the downwards revision period uh, we're, you know, and it's also a time where economic data is deteriorating as well. Yeah. Um, so you do have to be careful with those uh, with those earnings forecasts moving forwards. And as we can see, you know, inflation expectations are starting to pick up again as well. Yeah. Um, so it's not not an ideal time for equities, even though we may get a bit of short term optimism. Yeah, sh- um, short term sugar hit. Um, on the back of maybe some strong earnings results, uh, but that that may not last. Yeah. Yep. Or pro- probably won't last unless inflation comes down or the Fed pivots. Yeah, unless something changes. Uh, the the trajectory that we've seen for the last nine months, I think, um, is is likely to continue. Yep. I'll just quickly, we we'll, might finish off on this chart here. Um, so this chart's the implied inflation rates that we can take out of the bond market as well. Uh, you can see that, th- that that implied inflation rate had been coming down quite aggressively um, throughout September into October. Uh, but ever since that OPEC meeting where they've decided to cut production, uh, we've definitely seen a strong uptick in inflation expectations again. Uh, we'll be monitoring this very, very closely because if this continues to go up, then that's a massive, massive case for downward movement in the market as well. Yeah. Right. So for me, look, things are on a knife's edge. You know, the market's already come back off a lot and, you know, going off current uh, future uh, earnings expectations, the market's actually quite cheap down here. Mm-hmm. Um, but as Sam said before, if they revise those future expectations down over the next sort of quarter, um, then there's definitely a case for the market to go much, much lower. Yep, absolutely. So the, the risks are out there, guys. So let's see whether this ends up eventuating as the bottom or not. But, um, you know, happy to change our, move, uh, change our uh, view on the market when something changes. But what we're seeing right now is not positive. No, no, it is not. And, um, yeah. Just going back to what I said at the the start of the uh, podcast, you know, if you're trading and investing this market, you're being forced to speculate on um, on monetary policy and inflation. Now, if I was going to go along any sort of sectors at the moment, guys, keep one eye on the energy sector. Okay, so we're seeing crude come back up a bit. We're seeing energy prices stay elevated. Obviously, your coal type stocks, Whitehaven and that, are doing extremely well in this environment. So some of the energy sector would probably be uh, bullish. A bit short term bullish the banks. Um, so their profitability is improving at the moment, but they've got some pressures coming if uh, on loan defaults, maybe in the next few years, uh, depending on how long it takes them to drop rates again, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, short term bullish the banks, um, maybe bullish around some of the energy stocks when they're showing the right signals. But outside of that, guys, I'll be uh, a little bit on the bearish side. Yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, that's a good point to wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks for uh, listening in. Yes, thanks for tuning in. You know, we are uh, we are advisors. If you do want to chat about the market, give us a call. We'll put the number in the description. If you do have any comments or you want us to cover something in a video, let us know and um, hope you enjoyed it. That'd be great. Bye for now.